Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to write a program to copy a file from one location to another. This is just a simple file copy. Uh, the same thing that happens if you're using Windows and you right click on a file, say copy, and then you paste it somewhere. This program is going to do exactly that, not with the graphical interface, but it is going to copy a file from one location to another. Okay, so go ahead and open up uh, Visual Studio. And we're going to create a new project. I'm going to call it uh, Win32 Console Application. I'll call it File I.O. Go to Application Settings. Make sure you select Empty Project and click Finish. And let's add a new source file to it. I'm going to call it uh, a CPP file, File Copy. CPP and there is my uh, file. Okay, if we want to do any kind of input or output in C, we have to include the standard IO.h. If we want to do any kind of file input and output, we also include standard IO.h. So we don't have to include any other header files, just standard IO.h is going to do the trick. Uh, we have our main function. Inside of our main function, if we want to do uh, have any files, we need to have a uh, file pointer. So we'll do an input pointer and an output pointer because we're going to have an input file and an output file. Uh, so that's where those two come from. I'm going to create a couple variables here. Uh, a character uh, ch. I'm going to create an input file name and an output file name as pointers. I am then going to allocate uh, some space to each one of my pointers. Let's say that the input file name can't be more than 100 characters long, and the output file name also. Let's prompt the user now to enter the name of the input file. We're going to read it in as a string into that variable input file name. We're going to do the same thing for the output file name. Alright, so now we've read in the input file name and the output file name. If we want to open up a file for reading, we're going to put that into this uh, variable we've created called input pointer. We're going to use that function fopen, that's for uh, opening a file. Uh, the first parameter that it takes is going to be the name of the file that we would like to open. We're going to call it input file name, and then we need to say whether we're how we're opening it, what mode. We're going to open this one for reading. Our output pointer, on the other hand, is going to be with our output file name. We're going to open that one for writing. Okay. We have this if statement. If the input pointer is equal to null, I'm going to add in there also if the output pointer is equal to null. Obviously, if we can't read the file and we can't write to the other file, we aren't going to be able to copy. So uh, I'll just put a little print line here so we know if there was some message. Unable to open one of the files. And then we're going to return from our main function. Obviously, we can't copy the file if we can't open the input file, or if we can't open the output file, we're not going to be able to copy our file. Okay, now we're ready. We've got everything set up. We're ready to start copying. The way that we copy, I showed you this during the lecture for today. While we're not at the end of the file on our input file, that's that not EOF, or the not FEOF, then I'm going to read, uh, oops read from my input file uh, into this variable that I call ch and then I'm going to write out to my output file that variable ch and that's almost it we want to make sure it's always a good uh, practice to get into flushing your output file uh, make sure that you close both your input file and your output file and then since we did allocate, uh, we used the new operator, we allocated some space to these pointers, we want to delete them so that it frees back up the space uh, that was used in memory for those variables. That should be it. I think we're ready to go ahead and compile it. Let's compile this up, see what happens here. few warnings, it succeeded, and we're ready to try it out now.
Okay, so it compiled up. Let's go ahead and run it. And it says enter the input file name. So what I'm going to show you here, I have navigated here. Uh, uh, let's see how I can show all of this at the same time. I've navigated here to this specific directory. So you see this is inside of my users. Uh, my username documents Visual Studio 2010 projects file IO file IO. Inside of that here you see the file copy.cpp file. Uh, this file is the one that we're going to copy. So this is the directory which is going to be our relative directory. If you go into the debug directory, uh, you're going to see a lot of other files in there, nothing really meaningful in there. Um, if you go into file, just up one directory to file IO and debug, that's where your exe file is. However, into the file IO, file IO directory is where my file copy.cpp. This is actually the directory that Visual Studio uses. This is where my project files are that Visual Studio uses for uh, its relative directory for file input and output. So now, what I'm going to do, this is going to be kind of a neat program. I'm going to copy my file copy.cpp. So this code that I have right here in the back is what I'm going to copy. And I'm going to put it into a file. Let's call file copy-new. I'm going to make it a TXT file so it's easier for me to open and show you what's going to happen here. <coughs> Once we run that, you notice here I got a new file created in that directory now called file copy newtxt You can go ahead and close that. If I open that up, you notice that what you see is an exact duplicate of uh, the code that I had uh, behind us here. So uh, pretty neat. You now we can write a file copy program from what we know. Um, I'll go ahead and post this code that we have uh, that we wrote here up on the, the website. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.